2022 marked the second NFL draft under principal owner and chair Sheila Hamp, who took over the position in June of 2020. She reflects back on her journey as a Ford, a mom, and an NFL owner. Actually, my office in general was a uh, conference room, and I just sort of moved in. Chris would be happy to tell you I threw him out. When I wanted to move closer to coach and the general manager and be more in the thick of things, this was an empty space. What's your first memory growing up around the Detroit Lions, this franchise? I remember going to games at Briggs Stadium, and I think, I gosh, five or six, you know, and sitting outside and freezing and, you know, wearing trash bags. And, you know, we would all troop there and we would drink warm drinks and, and sit out in the freezing cold, but we loved it. If that's your first memory, what is your all-time favorite memory? My favorite player was Night Train Lane. And uh, so it was, it was my 13th birthday, and uh, my dad told me that my grandmother was coming to dinner. So I went up and put on a dress or something, came downstairs, the doorbell rang, and he, he said, it's your, it's your grandmother, you know, why don't you get the door? It was Night Train Lane, oh. standing there with a birthday present for me. Well, that was, I think, I, the best birthday I ever had and ever will have. Born into the Ford and Firestone automotive families with Sundays spent at the football field, Sheila started forging her own path. Sports were a way to just be yourself, you know, and I focused on tennis, which is an individual sport. So it gave me a lot of confidence as a person to be on a court with an opponent. And it was just me against her and made the best person win. And nothing to do with my family, was or anything, it was just me and what I could do. I actually had a poster that I uh, carried with me from, you know, it was in my room in high school to college. Snoopy carrying a tennis racket and he's kind of sweating and walking along and going, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, and then dot, 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 until you lose. <laughs> and that's really what I felt like, you know, be a good sport, but <laughs> I do not want to lose. <laughs> That competitive mindset led to the national ranks as a junior tennis player and a high school state champion, all before Sheila would pave the way for women's sports at Yale University. I did go visit and actually talk to the tennis coach at the time. There was no women's team, but I talked to the men's tennis coach. My dad took me on a tour. He loved it. And then when I did get in, I thought, okay, you know, I can do this. I've really never been afraid of things and of life and so I think I you know was there and I've never been a quitter either so I just thought you know I can do this you know and it, it again I think the more confident I got the better it got and, and the more I felt like you know I belonged. Not only was Sheila a part of the first graduating class at Yale to include women she helped jumpstart the varsity women's tennis program. I actually think it prepared me a lot for actually what I'm doing now because it was a very, very male-dominated institution. There were like 4,000 men and 250 women. And I think graduating, a lot of the women didn't make it. It was just too much. Sheila did, though. The art history major's dream job coming out of Yale in 1973 was working for the NFL. When she approached the league, they told Sheila they had no job for her to do. Since then, I've talked to some you know, colleagues that were about my age, male, that started working at the NFL in the day. And one particular person I talked to said, oh, I delivered checks. And I said, I would have delivered checks if they thought I was capable of delivering checks, but I guess I wasn't. So things have changed a lot, so for all for the better. The Yale graduate went on to grad school to earn a degree in early childhood education. Sports and then Kids have always been a huge passion of mine. I love children. So I did, I taught elementary school for a couple of years um, in the Boston area where I went to graduate school. And then I moved back to Michigan and uh, really to kind of think about what was next. You know, I was my mid twenties and kind of that time in your life where you're not sure what you want to do. And it just, I wanted to kind of come home and think. Sheila would come home to work for the Henry Ford Museum where she eventually met her husband, Steve. They added three sons to the Hamp family, and Sheila was called to her next adventure, stay-at-home mom. 
You know, my family being a prominent family, I got asked to do a lot of things in the community and I always tried to be involved in the community, but my focus was my family. And really I did have an elbows out uh, approach. You know, I, I'm not gonna take on more than I can handle. And what I really wanna focus on are my boys and their lives. I ended up coaching soccer um, by chance, for, but ended up working out beautifully. I loved it for like 10 years. So did the thought of entering into an ownership role in the NFL cross your mind? No. You were raising your boys, that was your focus. The grandbabies came along. You've got three uh, boy grandbabies mm -hmm. as well, a girl on the way. So why put the elbows down and, and start considering principal owner as your title now? When my mom took over and she did an amazing job, you know, my dad passed away in uh, 2014. You know, she was really a role model for me, and I, I don't think I could do what I am doing today without her first setting the stage. Because even in 2014, you know, things were very different for women. It's when she first walked into uh, an NFL meeting, you know, mostly males sitting around this large room in high back leather chairs. And, you know, and you see my mom, she's not tall. <laughs> and, you know, she marched in and took her seat and, you know, was undaunted, really. I was by her side, so I got to see what she was doing. It made that transition so much easier for me. Sheila's first six months as principal owner were full of adversity and major decision making in regards to letting a head coach and general manager go and then replacing them. It was a lot. And then, and then we lost our quarterback <laughs> on top of everything else. But, you know, it's like, OK, you know, let's just, you know, reset here. We can do this. And, you know, I, I you know, certainly was not the Lone Ranger. I had, you know, obviously Rod Wood and Chris Spielman and others around me, Mike Disner, and then my family, um, you know, to lean on, to talk to. What would you say to a woman that wants to maybe coach in the NFL or become a GM or maybe even become an owner? I love watching the Buffalo Bills, watching the Tennessee Titans become real forces in the NFL under women leadership. I really think anything's possible and I think they're starting to be you know, pipelines and examples and, you know, there was, I couldn't even deliver checks. So. <laughs>